The Guardian does a hit job on Boris and Dominic Cummings, the EU work with China on disinformation, and we talk about the Brexit negotiations. Well, the mainstream media, the broadcasters and the, the fake news uh, outlets are coming out uh, against the government. And this is not the right time to go against Boris Johnson because Boris Johnson is now very popular and it's the media who's actually uh, disliked by the general public. And uh, so we're going to talk about the hit job that The Guardian and the BBC decided to do. Uh, well, primarily The Guardian, backed by the BBC. Uh, and uh, also the latest that we have when it comes to the relationship between the EU and China. It's quite toxic. So we, uh, make sure to watch to the end of the video when we talk about that. And we have a latest update from the Brexit trade negotiations. Let's start with The Guardian and Dominic Cummings. So as you know, Dominic Cummings is Boris Johnson's senior political advisor, and uh, he, he, obviously his job is to represent the political side, uh, the democratic side of Downing Street, uh, to be uh, Boris Johnson's uh, basically ears and voice in general uh, when it comes to dealing with the, the bureaucrats and the civil service. Now, as you know, the government has this uh, independent scientific body, a group of people who are uh, deciding in terms of coming up with the research and advice to the government on to how to deal with this current problem. And uh, there was a report last night in The Guardian, about the, actually about today, this morning, about Dominic Cummings. And they, they said that it's been revealed that Dominic Cummings sits on the secret science advisory group. Secret. <laughs> it's so secret that everyone's been talking about this group for the past few weeks. Now, this story was picked up by uh, Lou Scuttle, uh, the BBC uh, said that remarkable story from The Guardian. Cummings' place on stage must, must considerably lessen the authority of Downing Street guided by the science line, given we now know that, uh, to, to some extent at least, that scientific advice has been influenced by Downing Street. Now, when you look at the actual article in The Guardian, it's talking about how uh, Cummings and a data scientist he worked with on the Vote Leave campaign for Brexit are on the secret scientific group advising the government. And uh, it, 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 the whole thing, firstly, they keep talking about how this uh, group, the uh, scientific advisory group is uh, for emergencies is secret. Okay, sure. I mean, everyone's been talking about it for the past few weeks. Uh, secondly, uh, they, they did this to reveal that this is a leak and we have exposed a massive scandal that the prime minister is sending his senior advisor to these meetings. Again, Lewis got all then updated saying Downing Street denies the Guardian story. Uh, the spokesperson has said uh, it is not true that Mr. Cummings or Dr. Warner are on or members of SAGE. Uh, the DC and DW have attended some SAGE meetings and listened uh, to some meetings now, now that they are all virtual. I mean, I don't understand what the story is here because uh, <laughs> we, we are going to talk about some of the reactions we had uh, from the left and uh, especially the left wing activists and media. But primarily, uh, this, this, these sort of things are, exist uh, and then they run by bureaucrats. And uh, obviously the prime minister has been ill and also obviously busy anyway. So he has to send uh, some sort of representative from the more democratic side of government uh, to uh, at least find out what's happening in these meetings. It, it, there's nothing wrong with it. And it's not like, you know, Dominic Cummings is actually leading these meetings. There's absolutely no evidence. Yes, Tom Harwood tweeted, I'd be more concerned if top political advisors in number 10 were barred from attending SAGE meetings or forbidden from asking their scienti uh, scientists about their recommendations. Even Dan Hodges said, can someone point to a single decision adopted by SAGE, the CMO or the CSA, as a result of influence by Dominic Cummings? A single one? Well, they're absolutely right because uh, they're not members of this group. That that would be that would have been slightly different, but they they just attend and listen. They're not even running these meetings. So why why is this happening? The, the whole point of this is that the Guardian and now the BBC are talking about this. This is their way, the new way to attack Boris Johnson to uh, bring down his authority. And uh, the best way to attack Boris Johnson at the moment is because if they directly attack him, considering he's very popular, at seventy five percent. Uh, approval rating, uh, th then it's not going to work. So what they're trying to do is use a back alleyway. They go after Dominic Cummings to attack Boris Johnson. It's quite clever, but this story kind of backfired. So yeah, The Guardian came up with it and the BBC Newsnight, or as I would call them, the fake Newsnight, decided to dedicate a whole segment of the show last night on this 
to this like, the story. Like the Guardian uh, obviously reported the whole uh, thing, and uh, the news night decided to bring on some guests, including the former chief scientific advisor Sir David King, uh, to say, "Oh, what does this all mean?" And then you have people like Piers Morgan. Uh, so someone said, uh, so when ministers kept saying we've been following scientific advice, they meant the advice of Cummings. And Piers Morgan said, that is the question. He's also said, this may turn out to be the biggest scandal of this crisis. Oh my God. I don't even know what to say about this, but uh, <laughs> we had uh, the uh, political uh, commentator Alex Dean uh, going on Sky News last night and actually telling the truth about a sage and the relationship between uh, Downing Street uh, or the political advisors like Dummy Cummings and uh, these sort of groups. Yeah, I, I'm amazed at the ingenuity of The Guardian to be able to write headlines which mean I don't like Dominic Cummings uh, in so many different forms and ways uh, over the weeks and months in which he's been involved in government. It's inevitable that the Prime Minister will have a political advisor attend such meetings. By the way, they're not secret. I don't know whether the Guardian's... They, they start coming out even more more conspiracy theory and they say secret scientific advisory group. We all know the prime minister got a scientific advisory group, and so he so he should. And if it met completely out with any political uh, advisory um, input or, or monitoring, then there would be a complete disconnect between the prime minister and the executive and the scientific advisory group that meant and designed to advise him. Of course, there should be someone there from number ten who represents the Prime Minister's views, who is close to the Prime Minister and able to understand what the Prime Minister wants out of those meetings. That's his job. I mean, short of saying we don't think Dominic Cummings should have a job, and indeed we don't think there should be such a thing as special advisers, which, if, if that's what they mean, they should just come out and be honest. I don't see the point of stories like this in The Guardian. They just don't like the man. If that's what they mean, they should just print that headline again and again and see who cares. Well, he is absolutely right. Firstly, these groups are not secret. <laughs> they should stop saying secret. Uh, secondly, uh, do you want to hear the most ironic thing ever, which is absolutely hilarious? So Piers Morgan, obviously, he's a hip hypocrite. We know that. The second one is Alastair Campbell. He's kicking off. Yeah, Alastair Campbell has been tweeting saying, if true, also calling into question the judgment and the lack of attention to detail of the prime minister and also the spine or lack of of the government sci scientists who allowed such a thing to happen. He also said the government's science team, when ministers parrot were following the science, they mean they're following an attention-seeking eugenicist uh, who thinks that if he dresses like a math professor, he is one, and is a student who looks like he gets kicks setting... Oh, I don't understand what's happening here. Now, to remind Alastair Campbell of uh, the, the year 2003 and a country called Iraq, and when he himself, as uh, one of the senior advisors to Tony Blair, was not only attending uh, very, very secret and very top uh, military meetings, he was also leading some of them. He led uh, certain meetings at the uh, UN uh, Security Council. Okay, what was your qualification for that, Alistair Campbell? And what was the outcome of those meetings and the reports and the dossiers? Hmm. I don't think this is my problem with the people like uh, Alistair Campbell. They don't get the irony. It's <laughs> why do you have to open your mouth? But speaking of dossiers and reports, let's talk about the relationship between the EU and China, because that's quite toxic. Uh, the, uh, the European Union were trying to publish this report about China and the disinformation that's coming from Beijing. And uh, they were pressured by the Chinese government and they decided to soften their language. Yes, according to the New York Times, uh, China uh, had put pressure on the European Union uh, to not go too harsh when it comes to this report. Uh, but Brussels, bowing to heavy pressure from Beijing, European Union officials softened their criticism of China this week in a report. And uh, <clears throat> I mean, there is a lot of issues with this because the European officials first delayed and then rewrote this document in ways that uh, diluted the focus on China, a vital trading partner, uh, taking a very different approach uh, that, that compared to what uh, Donald Trump has done. And uh, yeah, why is everyone, anybody surprised uh, about this? Because the European Union, uh, as the global, globalist, elitist uh, bunch of bureaucrats, uh, they care more about being strong partners with a country and a government like China than to care about their own European citizens. This is why I'm very glad uh, to uh, and happy to mention that uh, David Frost, the a chief negotiator from the UK side 
has now uh, published uh, his statement yesterday uh, updating us on uh, the Brexit negotiations and our strong approach. Yeah, David Frost uh, said that he's just finished a constructive round two of negotiations with Michel Barnier and he's published this statement from the UK side. He said that if we are to make progress now, we need to focus on agreeing a future relationship that has a comprehensive free trade agreement at its core, like those the EU has agreed elsewhere. Uh, we support high standards, but there is no need for novel and unprecedented level playing field rules. For example, tying us to EU laws or a role for the EU court, uh, generally speaking. Uh, what the EU proposes is unlike anything agreed in other such FTAs, and we will not agree to it here. Finally, we are ready to work uh, to agree a fisheries agreement which reflects our rights under international law to control our own waters and provides for annual negotiations uh, over access based on scientific principles. We won't agree to continuing the common fisheries policies. Yes, this is perfect. This is great news and I'm very glad that David Frost is actually in charge. Uh, he's completely rejected the level playing field idea, the uh, access to the UK waters and is very strong to say that the European Union need to treat us the way they have treated any other independent nation when they negotiated with them, whether it was Canada or South Korea. Uh, why, why should we be different? And uh, this is absolutely amazing. So Michel Barnier is obviously kicking off. He's not happy. Um, so the way things are going, I don't think it's, it's now been too public from the government side. I don't think we are going to see a U-turn when it comes to level playing field or the fisheries, uh, which means you're either going to have the European Union uh, the last minute actually uh, g giving up and say, fine, we'll just give you a, an FTA, or this will result in um, the WTO. Uh, we'll be leaving without any deal, which means it will be a temporary thing until the European Union come back and beg us for an FTA. So it's, <laughs> it's actually quite good for once to, to uh, give you an update on the Brexit negotiations without getting frustrated. So thank you, David Frost and the team for being strong on behalf of the UK. Now we will uh, keep you guys posted uh, and I, I'm gonna have some uh, a new uh, announcement and uh, good news uh, hopefully very soon. So if you are new to the channel, make sure you subscribe to the channel and click on that bell next to it so you get notified. We have a daily show at 5.45 p.m. Uh, later tonight or tomorrow, I'm also gonna be posting a video for the members of this channel, exclusive video for the members. If you want to join as a member, make sure to check out the link in the description or find the join button next to subscribe or just go on your browser and type in youtube.com slash myitc slash join. It's actually thanks to you guys, the supporters and the members of this channel that we can actually continue the work we do here. And so if you want to check out the link, see if you would be interested to support the channel and get something back in return, then do so. And as usual, I'm Maya Tusi. I'll see you guys tomorrow with a new video.